Hey, can we keep it quiet out there? I'm working on my craft. Man, I'm working on my craft. I was watching a sports show the other day, and these uh, basketball players were saying, Dude, he's working on his craft. His craft. Like, that means he's practicing basketball. It's fine with me. Craft, I'm good with it. So I'm working on my craft here. You got it? Okay, good. Today's video is about how to make a drop pendant out of opal. It's a pretty simple thing, and I think you'll enjoy it, and maybe you'll even make one of what your own. What about the question and answer video? Weren't we doing that? I remembered all my lines. Remember, you can't answer any questions. Only speak when I ask you a question. I was doing a video on your questions and answers. The number one question was, how did I do this? I did this at the end of the last video. Basically, I, I drilled a hole and inserted this peg, and epoxied it in and made a drop pendant, a dangle pendant. This is Australian opal. It's very pretty. So today I'm going to explain just exactly how this is done. Show you how to do it yourselves. It's probably the easiest thing that you can do to make a simple drop pendant out of opal. So let's get started with this. People have been making drop pendants out of pearls for a long time. We will be using the same jewelry parts that are used to make pearl drops with this opal. Now I've made a number of these drop pendants through the years and they don't come off of the setting if it's done correctly. So listen up. So here's what we're going to need. You're going to need a Dremel tool or something like it, a flex shaft. This is what I use. We're going to need diamond ball burrs, one millimeter and 1.5 millimeters, or alternately diamond twist drills. We're going to need a screw eye for the peg and we're going to need a bail with an open ring to attach to the screw eye. This open ring is very important. We'll also need epoxy 5 minute and some sort of sticky stuff to hold the setting in place while the epoxy sets. The toughest part may be finding a polished opal to use on your drop pendant. What I'll be using today for this demonstration is this fossil cockle shell, which I worked on and eventually polished and it looks pretty good, so let's get started. The first thing to determine with any pendant, you have to hold it like this, and you have to look down on it with light coming in like from the sun and turn it so the color looks best. And to me, it's right about there. So in this, in this straight on view, this direction looks best. So in order to get this right, I have to drill straight down through there, through both sides of the clam. Hopefully we'll do most of our drilling underwater. Um, I mean, I'm not going in. I don't think I'd fit, but maybe I would. So I'm holding it underwater, and I'm going to come down from the top. This is the tool. You don't necessarily need to hold it underwater. In fact, I'm going to put an indentation in there just as a starter hole. Okay, I'm going to proceed now. Sort of about two millimeters in. This is the pin. It barely fits into that hole. That's how far it goes in presently. There's where we are. About th two to three millimeters in. Now let's see. Every time I do one of these things, it always seems to get stuck just about where we are. Got it. Now we'll proceed to the next step. OK, 
Okay, here's our cockle shell. There's our hole. I'm going to dry out the hole. There's still a little water in it. It's dry by now, so this is the, the epoxy that I use. Bob Smith. It's, it's five minute epoxy and it really is five minute epoxy. We put one small drop of resin and one small drop of hardener. This is where the magic starts. We mix the two together and then we're ready to, to proceed. It should be good. Let's put some epoxy in that hole. and We'll put the pin in and we'll let it rest for at least five minutes. I like to use a tiny paintbrush for this. You pretty much almost fill the hole. Of course, the shaft of that pin is going to push some of it out and it'll be caught, hopefully, underneath that cap. Looks good. So how do we hold it in place? Well, this is super sculpy, a type of clay. We insert the pendant into the clay and get it straightened out. Looks good. And now we just let it sit for, well, at least five minutes. Quit messing with that clam. Let's get down to business. We've got questions that need Give to be Give it a answered. rest, Sheila. So it's been five minutes and everything's ready to proceed. We take out the open loop bale and use needle nose to open it up just like that, just enough to slip that screw eye into there. Now we go and slip it in the, the screw eye. This is the tough part now. We have to close the ring back up. Close this loop. Just about have it. There it is. Home free. Looks really good. A word of caution, when you're using Ethiopian opal, you cannot submerge it under water. You have to use this technique where you drill and then add water, drill again and add water. And after you've got the hole drilled, you need to let it dry completely before adding epoxy or it will not hold. So where do you get Ethiopian opal? for your drop pendant. I recommend Etsy. Etsy has all sorts of things, including, if you'd want, round Ethiopian opal beads. I'm so proud of that little thing I put together. It was supposed to be for the beginning of the video, you know, to show that I'm a really macho serious player but i thought that it would scare most people off and it's a little bit well over the top but i had to put it in there the next video is already in production it's the question and answer video that sheila so hopped up about the one thing that i learned this week that i did not know is that if you don't have the bell turned on for notifications you won't necessarily be notified by email so if you want to definitely be notified, you need to hit the bell. I thought you'd like to know. I hope to be seeing you again soon, so I'll see you then.